And now, once upon a night, Life, I've held it in my hands. I felt it slip through my fingers. I've been there when a baby drew its first breath, and I've been there as the last gasp of air escapes from a tired and dying body. Such is the joy and helplessness of my life and work as a physician. Sometimes it seems that life was meant for despair and death, but then I'm called to help the birth of a child. I love to hear that first cry and hold the new baby in my hands. As I gaze into the newborn's face, I'm reminded that our God is a God of creation, of new beginnings. There has never been a birth as miraculous as when Jesus was born. When the eyewitnesses tell their stories of this event, you can sense their excitement, see the wonder in their eyes. I've carefully gathered and investigated these things. And now I set out to write an account so that others may know the gospel story. At the time of Jesus' birth, the world was a dangerous place, full of repression, despair, and death. The Jews were continuously praying to God that he might quickly send the promised Messiah to lift them from their suffering. In God's time, as the way had been prepared, God came to earth in the form of a baby. And then, in a small town, very quietly, the Savior was born once upon a night.
As the story begins, the Jews are a weary people. For years they had prayed for a savior, a Messiah to come and save and restore Israel. And though prophets had painted the way to the birth of Jesus, to the birth of Messiah, the people still waited. Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth were also waiting. For most of their lives, they had prayed to have a child, but they had no children. And they were both well along in years. Once when Zechariah was serving as priest before God, he was chosen to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. As he entered the temple, a crowd of worshipers remained outside, faithfully praying for the Messiah to come and save Israel. But Zechariah was struggling with his faith. He was so tired of life and he wondered if God was listening. appeared to him standing at the side of the altar. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, the Lord has heard you. Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to name him John. He will be a great joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice in his birth. He will prepare a way for the Lord and will go forth in the name and the praise of Zechariah. We prayed for children all our lives. Now I am old, and so is my wife. We prayed in
his wife did become pregnant and was overjoyed. But Zechariah still could not say a word. He couldn't celebrate the greatest event in his life. Was his silence a punishment for not believing? Or was it simply that he could no longer testify to the power and miracles of God? How different it was a few months later when God once again sent out the angel Gabriel, this time to Nazareth, to a virgin named Pleasure pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. Her name was Mary. She was so young, so innocent, and ready to be used by God. When the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are mightily favored. The Lord is with you. Greetings, blessed one, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. For you will conceive and give birth to a child, and you shall give. Soon afterward, Mary hurried down to see Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, 
and blessed is the child you will bear. Together they celebrated the two tiny lives they carried within them. Mary was so filled with gratitude, she overflowed with an excitement and exclamation of praise. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. to give birth. Her neighbors and relatives shared her joy, thinking they would name the child after his father, Zechariah. But Elizabeth said, no, his name is John. Zechariah, still not able to speak, joined her as he wrote on the tablet, his name is John. Immediately, 
his mouth was opened and he began to praise God and prophesied, you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him. The way was prepared for a holy visitation. As I sit down to write I, about the arrival of the Son of God, a warmth and excitement comes over me. For this was the moment when God came into the world in human form. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, who were being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. It was an event that had been foretold for centuries And now the time for the child to arrive had finally come.
and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Mary and Joseph were overwhelmed but they were a long way from home. How they wished their family and friends could be there to celebrate the birth with them. Here in this strange town, they huddled alone in the stable. But they wouldn't be alone for long. Angels would invite shepherds to celebrate this birth. Shepherds' lives were hard and filled with drudgery. They were near the bottom of the social ladder, but they were chosen first to see the newborn Messiah. This night would change their lives forever and give them a story to tell till the end of their day. is hard, the struggle never ending, and we work through all night, night. We survive, but we are so weary from the by the roadside and watch the world go by. When it seemed that God had forgotten and we wondered if God could hear us pray, the angels came to show for certain that heaven remembered
as the shepherds went out glorifying and praising God, the parents were once again left alone with their baby. Mary pondered all these things in her heart. She peered into her baby's face and was amazed at how God had blessed her. She thought of the future, how she would raise this child in what could be a very dangerous world. Though she knew there would be challenges, still she trusted God for the future. As she watched him sleep just for this moment, in this place, all the world, all in the world seemed right.
there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon who was righteous and devout. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. When the parents brought Jesus into the temple, the Spirit moved Simeon to take the child in his arms and praise God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. Mary pondered all the things that had been said to her about her child. But one of the things that Simeon had said to her kept echoing in her mind. This child is destined to cause the falling and rising again of many in Israel. And a sword will pierce your soul. And a sword will pierce your soul. People ask me which was more important, Christ's birth or his death upon the cross. There is no answer. He came to the world to live, to die, to rise again, and to be with us forever through the Holy Spirit. I pray through every breath that I take 
to every day that I live, I will be a witness of this wonderful story of God's heavenly love. In this life, we know that there will be time for suffering. There will be time for pain. There will be time for pain. And I will describe all of this in my account of Jesus' life. But for now, I am overwhelmed with the miracle of his birth. Though the days may be dark, and the times challenging, we may know that we are not alone in this world. We may live in joy and celebration. Through this child, God has visited the earth and his spirit lives among us today. 